everybody, Steve Crawford here. I am sitting with Mark Durbin, and the reason that I'm here is I've known Mark for, I don't know, eight to 10 years, something like that, but he came uh, all of a sudden was diagnosed with some very, very rare cancer. And so I was sitting at home talking to my wife about it, and I was thinking, what can I do? Well, I do a lot of videos, so let's do a video. Let's get the word out about the type of cancer he has, because the fact that anybody from the West Coast can't get treatment for this type of cancer on the West Coast, to me just doesn't make sense, right? So the idea behind it is, let's have Mark explain exactly what type of cancer he has, what's going on, what his treatment options were, what the local doctors told him versus what he found out when he started making some phone calls and um, looking around at what other options are, treatment options, that kind of stuff. So I wanted to make sure I did a video because I want to bring awareness to the type of cancer that he has, bring awareness to the Durbin's needs as far as uh, out-of-pocket expenses, that kind of stuff that they've got going on to try to travel back and forth from Philadelphia to get treatment and how they had to change different insurances and all that different stuff and still have a large out-of-pocket expense. So I wanted to make sure that I had an opportunity to sit down with Mark, let him explain in his own words exactly what's going on and what, um, what we can do as a community to bring awareness and to help the Durban family. All right, so that is why we are doing this video. Mark, thank you. Yeah, absolutely, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the opportunity to sit down and just absolutely help spread the word. So <clears throat> why don't you start off, let's start off with what type, what is the exact name okay. and kind of go through some of the stats, sure. like how rare is it, okay. what kind of the treatment, that sure. type of stuff. So sure. what type of cancer have you been diagnosed with right okay, now? Okay, so it all starts in your eye, so okay. it's ocular which is the eye, ocular right. or uveal is the same word. Ocular and uveal, melanoma. All right. Starts in your eye, never starts anywhere else but your eye, and then stays there, hopefully, for the, the remainder of your life. What happens is they treat that melanoma in your eye, and they have a great institution here called the Casey Eye Center at right. OHSU. Awesome. Everybody can get treatment wherever they live in the United States, the world, here. What, when you ha enter into where it metastasizes or moves from the original site, that's where you have to seek experts in that because you're in trouble then, right? Right. Uh, so KCI Center, top notch, PhD, great doctors, treated my eye in 2011. It's called brachytherapy where they insert and do seed radiation in your eye. Totally fine. And uh, killed the tumor. It was a pretty large tumor to begin with. Um, but then it kills the tumor over time and you're not dealing with any live tumor there. It's still there, but it's dead. Okay. So a lot of people, depending on the genealogy of the makeup of the tumor, there's two classes. There's a class one and there's a class two. Class two has a high risk to metastasize. Class one does not. Okay. So you can opt to have that test done when you are treated, which we did. We ended up with class one. 2% chance to metastasize. 2%. And I'm sitting here, I'm one. I'm one of the 2%. <laughs> You're one of the 2%. Yeah. So very, you know, we had a very clean, you know, bill of health for a lot of years and thinking that the further you get out, the, 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 the you know, the hope is that you're going to be okay. Right. And I had a very low chance to metastasize because of the, the way that they had tested the tumor. Right. And here I am with it in my liver. So it can happen. And so does it always go to the liver? It, first, it does. That's where that's the that's usually where it's going to just reappear. Correct. If you have skin melanoma, which the word melanoma, a lot of people associate with that. Right. Totally different. Apples and oranges. Right. It wants to go to your lymph nodes and in your soft tissue. Ocular melanoma or uveal melanoma travels in the blood. Okay. The liver is a just a, it's the fertile. It wants to go right. It loves the liver. Right. From the liver, it moves to your lungs or your brain or somewhere else, but the liver is where it likes to set up shop right and that's where it does in most of the people and so now the rarity of it like you asked yeah five in a million five people out of a million will get this and so it's that rare so think about that five out of a million so just that just so we can put that in perspective how many people out of a million actually just get cancer like what i want to compare the numbers right? yeah like do you know that number no nope, i don't oh, because okay. i've been so focused, <laughs> focused on, on mine. this type yeah okay. so mine is so rare that uh and and that's why you know you really have to educate yourself on 
if you're just dealing with your eye, that's not that's not a big deal. But when you move to you know the, where I'm in, you got to educate yourself to who can help you, how right. to get help, right? What kind of help, you know? And there's no textbook. You got to figure it out. Right. And so this all started about two months ago. Correct. Okay. And so your initial diagnosis here was not good. Not good at all. And for anybody, it on will not the West be good. Coast for the most part. Yeah, and for anybody that gets into this kind of a you know diagnosis, it's poor. If anything you read, it's very poor. Three to six months, poor, uh, for it's, anybody, and no matter what. And then you have to just go, okay, I don't accept that, or is there something else? You know what I mean? You're right. just not going to take that. Right. So, uh, so then we. We got out of a couple of appointments and we said, no, that's not. We're not just going to. No, yeah. I'm not just not going to go home and go do what they tell me. I'm going to research this. And that's where we found resources out there to what are you doing? So there's resources, foundations and different Facebooks and different groups. And I can pick up the phone and call you or him or anybody and say, hey, Steve, what what are you doing for yourself? Right. And talk to a person one on one. Right. And that's been the most valuable versus a doctor saying, this is what we have, go try it. You know, I want real people that have done real stuff to know if it really works, right. you know what I mean? Right. Because your liver, you only have one liver, right? Each of these things does things to your liver each time you do it. So you gotta do the right thing at the right time to preserve as much good part of the liver as you have. So it's, it's, uh, it's a minefield to yeah. get through, but it's worth it, right? It's right. Your, you know, so. So that, because it's in your liver, that's, so what you've done, I mean, you went complete 180 on your diet. Correct, yeah, diet. Supplements. Um, meditation, your whole, your whole Eastern, Western meets, you know, right. med, flipped our whole life. Yeah. You know, flip flops to bare feet to, right. you know. Right. Eating at Ruth Chris to, you know, where, where can I get a salad, right? <laughs> you know, yeah, so you've 180 it. Right. To and that you're just trying to prolong. I mean, you're you, just, yes, there's get no, as healthy as you can. No cure for this at all. The only thing you're trying to do is prolong it and have, you know, have the good Lord help you here. But medicine might catch us eventually. Right. They're doing a lot with cancers as far as right. boosting your own immune system with, with cells and trying to boost your own immune system. And they're all playing with that, you know, because everybody has it in their body, but your immune system is fighting it off. Why didn't mine? Right. So it's about not killing everything. How do I enhance his immune system to go fight it like it should have? So it's all getting back to the good Lord put everything in here. Why can't it just do what it's supposed to do? Yeah, why and that's what they're trying to figure out. Right. And that's the hope that it catches this ocular melanoma thing when it metastasizes. Right. So tell me about, real quick, so you're, you found a doctor in Philadelphia. Yeah, through these, through these foundations and through these Facebooks. We had heard the name. And then you start figuring it out. You put anything in Google that just, uh, you know, right. longest survivor. You're just ho any hope that you're holding on to, right? Right. And so this guy's name keeps coming up time after time after time. And we've talked to people that have, you know, had real experiences with it. And this Dr. Sato in Philadelphia is the guy. 38 years in the business, PhD. He only works on people that ha it has metastasized. Okay. So he's not the guy you go to initially. Right. He's the guy you go to like when you're in trouble. Right. And that's all he does. And so they've developed different procedures to help direct it at the liver because that's where it goes first. Mm -hmm. So he's he's developed a procedure that, that most people go seek uh, if it's still in your liver and not spread. If right. it's spread, then you can go anywhere. This guy seems to be the guy that when it's first in your liver, this guy has the answer to help you. Oh. So that's where we've all kind of, and I mean, they've done 400, they do about 400 procedures a year, 400 a year. So you can imagine people from all, all over the world are coming to him Wow! because of this. And he's had really good success. Some people don't get success. Some people do. Some people, it prolongs their life a long time. Some people can't tolerate the, the procedure. It's all over the map, you know, right. but it's, it's something that you got to do, you know, to try to help yourself. So, right. So the hope obviously is prolonging. Correct. You're just, you're just trying you're to, just, you're trying to get that, you know, that three to six month thing, you're throwing that away. Right. And you're saying, no, I'm going to just, you know, not put 
and it's all averages, right? He, you could live three and I could live six. What was the difference in the both of us? You know, it's, so it just depends. Yeah, but three is still better than three months or six months. Correct. Right? So we're, there's been people that, that are still on this and they're five years out. But it depends on how much of your liver is, you know, burdened with tumors. Or right. did it spread? Uh, are you a healthy person? You know, yada, yada, yada. Lots of different factors. Female, male. How big was your tumor initially? Uh, what class is it? All these things factor into your prognosis going forward. And the whole thing is to catch it early, right? Like you do, and then get back to whoever can help you and start treatment. Right. And then that's the hope to keep that thing at bay for as long as you can. Right. So the hope, obviously, with doing this video is to try and get as much awareness towards the foundations that are fighting this right right which will provide links for all of this sure. information sure and um and and raise as much money for cancer research as we possibly can that's yes. the, that's really why we're trying to do this that's fantastic um and try and see if maybe we can get somebody on the west coast yeah right to right. doing the same treatments right is there a reason why nobody else he's been doing this for 38 years lisa was telling me earlier yeah. that for 14 years he was going through and trying and trying and trying to master it. So that means he's been doing this a long time. Yeah. There to was... try to figure out exactly what you can do to treat this. Why has nobody, other than this one guy, Yeah. do you know, have you read anything about why darn, nobody else is doing it? Darn good question. You know, there's, there's fantastic facilities, that, you know, like MD Anderson, you've probably heard of, they're in Houston. Uh, there's great stuff in UCLA and down in the, you know, Ur San Francisco area, Irvine. There's, there's world-class centers all over right. Seattle Care, Cancer Care Alliance. There's places, but this is such a, a specialized, not a very, it's a, you know, it's not a very, you know, not very many people get it, right? So there's not going to be a doctor just placed everywhere because the patients aren't coming in very often, you know what I'm saying? Very few patients. Uh, so, I don't know why the guy's in Philadelphia, but that's where you have to go, you know, that's, for this yeah. certain, I wish there was one closer, right. but there's just not a large population. And when there is studies to do, they're not around very long, right? So <laughs> the trials don't last very long right. because they test, test different things while the patient doesn't live very long. Right. So, so it makes it's it a difficult. tough disease to tackle right. from the population, from they're not around very long. You know, it's a really tough one to tackle. Right. But there is research going on and there's like this video, I hope, I hope somebody sees it and, you know, throws whatever resources they want at it or the, they have a passion for it or right. it touches a nerve in somebody. That's my hope too. Right. So one thing that I feel like it's going to be important is if somebody Googles the type of cancer that you have, right. this video will show up. And in this video, there's going to be links below right. of all of the support groups, yep. of all of everything that you found by yes. doing your research. Yep. We'll, we'll just provide those links. Sure. Because then that'll make it easier for yeah. people to just Absolutely. go right and get help Absolutely. immediately, right? The quicker Absolutely. they can find the help and the, yeah. the quicker they can turn their diet around and do all right. the stuff you've done, right? Right. So, um, so talk to me a little bit about insurance because I know you guys went through when you found out you had to go to Philadelphia yeah. to get all your treatment. Right. And then you found out, well, your insurance isn't going to do that. Right. So the insurance thing is, is tricky from anybody's standpoint. And then you just have to be transparent about it and say... I have to go to Philadelphia and I have to get treated at this, this location and this is the treatment. And some insurance would say, no, that's not covered and some will. So we ran up against, you know, block wall after brick wall after block, you know, just boom, boom, boom. We were getting blocked. And so finally we had to, uh, luckily we, we have an LLC and I'm able to get group insurance, not private, but group. And so we were able to come up with a plan that will provide us insurance that they accept out of network. So in network, out of network. Everybody knows what in network yeah. is because you're all in network, right? So we're traveling out of network, but they do cover out of network. And that's what we had to get. And it was hard to find. Right. We, we had one that we were fine with in network, but they said, no, no, you can't travel to Philadelphia and get this high class, you know. So treatment. it wasn't even an out of network charge. It was just they weren't going to cover it at um, all. No, it was not. Right. So, so then obviously the doctor says, well, that's not acceptable. We can't do that. You got to find something that will. So then we just... It took us about a month to figure it out on the insurance side of things. And even though we have that at a network, obviously everybody knows what that means. Huge, huge deductible, huge out of pocket, just everything. It's just 
multiply. It's just right. fast. It just, right. It's almost like not having insurance, but you, you got some, right? Right. So right. that's where we're at now. We're cast into a really high deductible, a real high out-of-pocket cost before the, even the insurance would kick in, right? Right. But it's there. It's that safety net that you just won't wipe you clear out kind of thing. Right. I mean, and so that that's part two of why I wanted to do this video, right, is because I wanted to shine a light on um, what you're out of pocket. Didn't you say it's going to be close to 30000 or Yes. Yeah. And that's just for the insurance. Right. And then, you know, obviously we're just getting into treatment, so we don't know. Right. Even we don't even know what a treatment costs. We think it's around a hundred thousand per treatment. Per treatment. Per treatment. And I think that's a, a little high, but I don't know. If, no one's ever asked. You know, how well, much does it cost, right? You know, so. Well, here's the thing. Where else are you gonna go? Yeah. <laughs> right. So what, I mean, I'm sure I'll ask when I'm there. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, and ask him. By the way, how, how the hell? How much does this cost? You right. Know? And it, you know, so I'm sure when we get the bills, we'll figure that out pretty quick. Yeah. But uh, so. Huge out of even if we satisfy the deductible, then you're out of pocket. And then how many more treatments are we going to have? So the treatments, you go for four days back to Philadelphia. That's one treatment. I have to do four of those before they know if they're going to be effective or not. So the first one I go for four days, I come back to Westland, beautiful Westland, <laughs> and I stay for. And then the next month, you go do this again. So it's once a month. For once a month months. for four months. Okay. Because I have them in the left and the right. If you just had your liver has two lobes, right and left. If I just had it in the right or the left, it would be a lot easier, but I don't. I have them in both. So two treatments in the left, two treatments in the right. Let's see if this works. That's how my my journey is going to go. Right. So the out of pocket for your insurance plus obviously traveling huge to and from Philly. Huge. Right. Just a big deal, you know, yeah. yeah. Where to stay, right. what you know, just the logistics of it, right. planes, yeah. And then the treatments and then, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a it's a big deal to take on, but right. uh, so hopefully we can raise a little bit of money. Yeah, right with this video and raise some money for your GoFundMe, which we'll put a link to the GoFundMe to Perfect. try to help. And we're really, I mean, we're, we're not trying to win the lottery. We're just trying to offset the cost. <laughs> right. Of, sure. Of the thirty thousand plus the travel to and from right. Philly, right? Right. In hopes that you're here five years from now, and in hopes that they find a cure, a true cure, Correct. not a prolonged Correct. treatment, yep. right? Yep. That's the hopes, is that the research catches up yep. to you. Yep. And you're and, still here when it happens. And I think this, this video is awesome because if you ever get cast into this world, you are gonna be scared out of your mind. And I'm here to help you. Right. And you can pick up the phone or to call Steve or Mark or whoever, right. and I'm here to help you because no one no one's going to hold your hand here you've got to figure it out yourself but people are awesome people are are the i mean i can't tell you how many surprises i've had since i've been these last two months right like bring you to your tears that what people will do for you you know and so <clears throat> i really hope to be able to help somebody like i've been showing a lot of love right i just want to love back right. you know if i can help somebody well and and i think that our community yeah. as a whole is extremely supportive. Fantastic. And yeah. um, not everybody has that. Right. Not everybody right. lives in a community right. like what we do. Right. right. When word gets out that Mark is sick, I mean, I'm sure Lisa's phone is blowing up and there's meals and there's sure. money and there's gift cards yeah. and there's like, what do your kids need? And I mean, it's just immediate surprise after outpour surprise. of love, yes, right? Absolutely. And not everybody has that. Yeah. So it's important to make sure that when, if somebody is sitting at home scared to death and they've had this diagnosis, that there is a place where they can go get support. And that's the Facebook groups yep. and the yep. support centers that are out there. Right. Uh, and that's another reason why I want to do this so that, and yeah i want people to i want it to be easy yeah for people to find what took you two months to find yes i want it to be a lot easier yes. right so yeah um what i'll also would love to do is link some diets and i don't want to go through sure, it all but sure. i know that your wife has completely changed yeah. everything that goes in your body right which in hopes to just clean your body up yeah to fight off the cancers yep. to build up your immune system to do everything you can yep. to just live longer. Right. That's she's just trying to Absolutely. keep you on her. Absolutely. Right? right. And so um, those are all important things that maybe some people may not have uh, the resources or 
the knowledge, right. you already have it. So the yep. beauty is, is that we'll share it Absolutely. and get I think those fantastic. out to people. And, um, and so there's going to be a lot of links, um, but it's also important for people to be able to just reach out and talk to somebody. Absolutely. Right. And That's so, been the biggest, biggest key for us. Right. Is talking to humans about their experience, their fears, their hopes, their whatever. Right. And just being real with them, right? And so that's just been fantastic right. for us. And you've roller coastered over the last couple months, I'm sure. Yeah, as far as emotions and everything. Yeah, yeah I, I have a great support group here. Like you said, the community, I couldn't ask for anything more. I, I, I couldn't ask for more. Right. And, and y you drill down and you get to know who you're, what's inside of you too pretty quick, you know. Yeah. And yeah, your faith and your, your support group and all the different things that come together you start to rely on all those yeah right you have some dark moments obviously for sure but you have it way outweighs the people and the love that you feel from the community and your family and just the it, it gets you through those dark times you know yeah and i wake up each day going i got another one right so what if the hell? we could all have that <laughs> right if we could all have that perspective yeah. before you're sick right? right just wake up and go thank god i woke I up i got another one <laughs> right you know? here i go again i'm gonna live it right so right i really am blessed with my family and peep friends like you and, and the community uh great parents you know my dad's deceased but my mom's still living and you know fantastic people in your life that make the difference right right so it'd be a tough journey to go alone for sure because it's dark, you yeah. know, but all the people have lightened it up for me. So Good. I can't say enough about them. Good. So anything else? Um, I mean, I think I've covered. Is there anything else that you feel is important that you would want to share? If somebody's on the other end right now watching this video and they've been diagnosed in the last whatever. Yeah. 30 days or right, whatever. Right. Maybe they are alone or maybe they right. don't have the same support system you right. have. Um, what words of encouragement or what would you like to say? I mean, and, and you feel free to look at the camera on this one if yeah. you want and just speak right to them. But I feel like it's important for people to know, hey, this guy's got exactly what I have. Right. Yeah, I think, uh, I think initially you just go into shock, right? And especially you know, like my wife took it harder than I did, right? You know, and so I was a caretaker for her for the first few days, she was wiped out. And I thought, my God, she's taking this worse than me, you know? And so initially it is a shock because you don't even think it's gonna move from your eye to your liver because I, I had a very good chance of it not doing that. Then when you realize this is real, a guy just told me I have three to six months to live, then it, it starts to hit you, right? And then so we came home, went through our kind of grieving morning, whatever you wanna call it, and then we got our boots on, man, and we booted up. And went and to so, work. Oh, hell yeah. Right. So, I mean, we wore out Google. Google couldn't even tell us anymore, right? So just the resources that we figured out, who to help us, try to get all this information, what can I apply it to my life? Right. That's really the hope. You keep holding on to something. Right. I didn't walk away from those offices going, that's a ham sandwich. I'm not, eat I'm not taking that, you know? Right. We always talk about the ham sandwich in life. We're not going to take that. Right. And my kids know, you know, not to take it. So they know just be resourceful, get up, get off your, you know, whatever, and just fight for yourself. Right. Fight. And that's what we're doing. Right. And there is people out there willing to help you, but you got to go find them, right? So we're going all the way to Philadelphia for a guy that says, I can help you. Right. And no one held my hand and said, Mark, you got to call this guy in Philadelphia. You got to figure it out. But once you tap into the right people, right, you're you, you're gonna talk to people that have similar you know tr concerns and troubles and you know they're they're all trying to figure out how to prolong their life, right? Right. And so. I think as long as you're fighting, that is what provides the hope. Right. Agreed. I right. mean, is that kind of what you're? I mean, that. Yes. Is, yeah. And they're all trying to eat better, trying to meditate. You know, they're, they're applying all these things to take the stress out of your life. Let's, let's be more in touch with the earth. Whatever you're into, right? You're just trying to be more calm about your disease and trying to you know, figure out medically, Eastern, Western, what, how can I help myself? Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Right. And try it all. You try to mix all that in <laughs> right. and come up with something that works for you. Right. And there, there's, there's hope. There's always hope. Always. 
And if you're a spirit, spiritual person, that's what I hope, right. you know, maybe he'll let me, you know, yeah. be the guy. This this little book right here, right, is correct. your is your new pillow. Correct. At night, right? Correct. Yeah. You're sleeping on it and waking right. up and reading it every day. Right. I want you to show it on camera. Because if if you've got any kind of, I've read through just a few of these, but it's really about um, healing tumor is really what I see. Anything that's growing inside you that's not supposed to be there, right? And as you flip through, these are all the verses from the Bible all brought in about healing. That's right. what this is all about. Right. God's power and healing, which is yep. a really cool little book. Yep. Um, cute little thing. So I wanted to show that too. If you are in need, please look that up. Um, that's a pretty cool book because I read through a couple of these. And this is your new daily. Yeah, and I think it's it's part of your pie, right? right. You know, lean on your faith. Lean on medicine. Lean on food. Lean on right. friends, family. Yep. You know, right. it's all part of it that helps you deal with what you're going through, you know. So that helps you cope, you know. It right. helps me a lot, actually, you know. Good. And it brings me closer to God, and, 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 you know, if that's what it took. You know, I have no qualms that I'm going to be on the cross with Jesus. Right. No qualms. I know, for you sure, know. 100%. Well, that's, that's... I'm going, if I, if I go, that's where I'm going. That, <laughs> that's where you're going. Yep. Well, that's good. Yeah. Is that always been the case? No. No. I'm, I'm like a lot of people. I, I live in a town that has a lot of churches, and didn't go as regular as I should, but I tried to live a life that, that I didn't need to go to church to, to feel good about, right? Right. But to really have the relationship and this, you know, the, the close and just feel connected, it, it, it was a slow process. Yeah. And not just because I got sick did it come. You know, I lost my father last November. That helped me be a lot closer. But just maturing in your life. Right. And, and, and getting a better faith. And just reading. Yeah. Right. So that's helped me become a better person, I think, in life as well. So right. let me be here longer. <laughs> right now. Yeah, right? <laughs> you're finally formed into the person yeah. that they wanted you to be, yeah. and then they're taking you, right? Yeah, so that's exactly. Hopefully, hopefully you can stay here a little bit longer. Right. So, um, well, thank you. Absolutely. I, I really appreciate what you're doing and, you know, every, it's, it's class act, trying well, to help me and trying to bring awareness to this. I just really appreciate what you're trying to do well yeah i mean i think it's important that if somebody gets diagnosed and their doctor doesn't refer them to this doctor yeah it should just be an instant google search boom his name pops up right call him he's the only guy that can help you and we'll provide that stuff so yes. people can really get that yeah. and that's really the hope is that we can get people um one diagnosed quickly so on that just and we'll we, we may move this around a little bit sure but on that, tell me why, because there may be people out there that don't know, what was it that made you go to the doctor originally? And you did say you caught it early. How did you catch it early? What was your signs? Now, you're talking back to the when is in my no, eye? No, like after now, right now, two months from now. So a dermatologist appointment. So, you know, you, once you're on the radar, you're on the radar. And a dermatologist kind of came up. And this was back in COVID, right? This is back in March okay. or April. And she just, uh, she caught something, you know, that looked a little funny to her as far as my skin and, okay. you know, looking a little different and this and, and that. And that was just your normal checkup because, OHA, of, the, correct, because correct. of your original Correct. And then diagnosis. you kind of go to a dermatologist once you have, even though the melanoma thing, is, it's just, you need to go once a year. So I went to her and she said, I'd like you to go kind of do a little bit more, you know, I want you to, I want you to do a CT scan. Right. And I want you to do an MRI. And it could be nothing, but I just want you to do that. And that's kind of what brought all this on. Good for her. So, and then I did all <laughs> that. Ended up having a biopsy of my liver where they go in with an ultrasound oh, yeah. and, and biopsied my liver and found that, yes, that was the melanoma from your eye had moved to your liver. And that was, you know, that's how it happened is from that dermatologist appointment to here to there. So there was no true symptoms. Like you weren't feeling. A lot of people are asymptomatic. Okay. So you you have, don't even feel it. You don't have back pain. You don't feel. No. You don't. You don't have this weird. You all can. Right. You can Google all the symptoms, and a lot of people walk around feeling okay. Right. So another important point: go to dermatologist. Yes. <laughs> right. Like, don't skip your appointments and your, thinking that you're okay. And your eye doctor, and do just take time to take care of yourself. Right. You know. Because that's ultimately it started there. Yeah. If you just think if you would have skipped that. Yeah, that one appointment. If you yep. go every year, you yep. may have passed away before you even knew what it was. You don't know how important your health is, right? Until you don't have it, you know. Wow. And no amount of money can can help me kind of make it go back. No. 
but it can hope hopefully help me go longer right right, right. And, that's what, yeah. and that's what yeah and that's what we're trying to do yeah. yeah we're just see if we can keep you here for a little bit longer and that's I love the, it. That's the idea, I'm right? In, so, I'm in. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, that research gets passed on, and hopefully our yes. kids, if they end up with it, right. there's a cure. Correct. And that's the that's what we're, that's the hope. That would be awesome. Yeah. So, all right. Um, thank you. Absolutely. Thank again, you for doing this. Thank you again. And, um, you know, hey, just, if you're watching this and you're, it's at the end, um, just know that, you're not alone, first of all, and um, there's people out there that can help you, and there's people out there to support you. So use the resources that are available to you. Um, there's a lot of free resources. You don't have to have money. Um, if um, we're going to be donating money to the GoFundMe um, page for them, and then we're also going to be donating money to cancer research. Um, so in hopes that we can find a cure for this type of cancer, where it's not a three to six month diagnosis anymore. It's, hey, it's three to six months of treatment, then you're fine, right? That's the goal. That's what we're trying to get to. So, so donate if you can. Um, if you're going through it and you need support, reach out to people around you. Reach out to me, reach out to Mark, uh, reach out to anybody that you know or any of the foundations that are in the links below. And there's people there to support you and help you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate appreciate it and appreciate yeah. everybody out there listening and and, yeah. and God bless you. Yeah. God bless you. Perfect. Thank you.